What's going on people? Welcome back to Football Therapy with me, your host, yeah, and I hope you lot are doing well. I really do hope that. Welcome back to another Chelsea news video today. Three stories to talk about, two of them on potential outgoings, and another story of ESPN reporting on Chelsea signings next summer. But it is interesting though. One's Ben Chilwell, who had been linked to Chelsea and, I can imagine, still remains a very strong target for Chelsea. But also, the player that a lot of you guys were calling out for has finally been linked and reported by Mark Ogden of ESPN, who I always thought was seemed like quite a sensible guy, even if ESPN seems unreliable. Anyway, the other player is Hakim Ziyech of Ajax, very talented player. It's weird how no one's come in for him, but... I want to get into what that means, especially regarding the potential signing of Jadon Sancho, who very much is a Chelsea target. But anyway, regarding this month's news, outgoing. So we know Olivier Giroud is gagging to get out of the door so he can play some football for the remainder of the season. Apparently, Spurs could be the answer. I know. What a meme. And I think the most devastating news out of all of this is young, promising right back, right winger, little superstar Tariq Lamptey has got a pre-agreement with Lille to move there in the summer, but the club and maybe even the player are trying to get the move this January, which is very sad, and I'll get into that in a moment. A quick reminder to you there though to subscribe to Football Therapy if indeed you are new. Please hit the sub, subscribe button, that was weird. Hit the bell notifications icon, and if you like my Chelsea Vintage throwback shirt, like the video. <laughs> Alright, let's start with Tarek Lamptey, because this is a bummer, man. This kid came on a couple of times for Chelsea, he looked like absolute dynamite. Obviously he came on against uh, Arsenal in the win uh, away at the Emirates, looked superb, running up and down the flank, cutting inside, making inverted runs. Lampard has used him at right back and he's also used him in the front three on the right wing area of the pitch and he's looked very, very good. He's looked very talented and he kind of looks like an elite level utility player anyway his contract is up at the end of the season and Lampard's been questioned about this after he played him and he was like yeah we're trying to sign him up he's really good and all that but the thing is even though I think Lamptey was very very pleased to make his professional debut I think he realizes I think he's like 19 years old I think he realizes there's a 20 year old in front of him that not only is probably more skillful than him because he's looking like an absolute superstar in Reese James Reese James also has immense physicality who can body any opposition player off the ball, which if you look at Tarek Lamptey, he can't. No matter how talented he is, he's very petite, you know? I think that's okay when you look at players like Billy Gilmore because he doesn't seem faced by the physicality of the game, even though he's very small. Plus he plays more of a sort of quarterback register role, Billy Gilmore, where he can sort of float around the middle of the pitch, recycling possession. When you're even, as a fullback, if you're a defender, you need some form of physicality. Obviously, Reese James has it all. Tarek Lamptey probably realizes that and thinks, I'm never gonna get into this team. But at the same time, he's just come from the academy. Maybe he can be the second choice rotational right back. That's not bad at all for Chelsea Football Club when you're still a young kid. So it's disappointing to learn that he's got this pre-agreement with Lille and he could be leaving Chelsea. And actually as it stands, it looks like he is leaving Chelsea. So it's frustrating, I get why he wants to go, but at the same time, like, why don't you just stay? You can play on the right wing, you can rotate with Reese James, but whatever. It does seem a little bit like Chelsea will be letting another one slip, but at the same time, They'll be doing it in a position where, you know, if Reese James was 27 years old or something, he might think, oh, I'll stick around, I might be able to displace him, but they're pretty much the same age. So, whatever. Anyway, watch the space, I'll keep you guys updated on that story. Right, so before we talk about Ziyech and Chilwell, let's talk about Olivier Giroud. Now, I kind of feel for Giroud, right, because he, des apparently he's been really professional throughout this whole window and desire, probably transfer request, to go get some football before the Euros, but it's not really happening for him. And Antonio Conte seems to be signing every single Premier League player or people have played in the Premier League. Sanchez, Lukaku, Moses, Eriksen, uh, Young. Do you know what I mean? I'm not sure how likely it is they'll get Olivier Giroud over the line now. And now Chelsea won't be able to sign Moussa Dembele this window. The whole Leon swap deal thing is probably off the table. So sure there were other Premier League offers for Olivier Giroud like Aston Villa and I think indeed West Ham as well but to be honest if he can go to Tottenham 
and get an 18 month contract which they're offering him that training ground and that stadium and no matter what you say as a Chelsea fan Tottenham have, are a big club in England that could kind of be a really good move for Giroud it would be a peculiar one because he'd be doing what Gales did and played for Arsenal, Chelsea and Tottenham I think Arsenal fans who sort of had affection towards him even after the Europa League final because he was sort of sold and went to Chelsea and worked really hard I think no Arsenal fans at that point wished him any ill will but going to Chelsea you know beating them in the final saying thank you Arsenal with the Europa League trophy and then going to Tottenham yeah that might be the final straw that breaks it for Arsenal fans and the love relationship with Giroud might end anyway what do I think well the thing is Harry Kane's injured for the whole season so Giroud knows he'll be 100% leading the line for, you know, a big six club until the end of the season. And he knows the way Jose Mourinho is playing at the moment, affords balls into the box. Like Aldo Vireld was playing long balls uh, into, you know, into Harry Kane or whoever's making the run. So Giroud will fancy that all day long. He'll be able to do knockdowns and combinations of Lucas Moura and Son on the flanks and combine with Deli Alli. To be honest, the move suits him and the move suits Jose Mourinho and Tottenham really, really well. But that doesn't suit Chelsea fans because regardless to what you think, there's a lot left in the season and they're probably still fancy themselves to maybe get top four if they put a run of form together and get a striker. Mm. So Chelsea need to be wary here. I personally, as much as I love Giroud and I want him to get football till the summer, I really don't want him to go to Tottenham, you know? So that's a weird one. I'm not sure how inclined Chelsea are to do business with uh, the Tottenham people. The Tottenham people. The Spuds. <laughs> we'll have to see though. Watch this space. Of course, I'll, we'll keep you guys updated on what's happening. So, in terms of incomings in January, it's the same. The window is nearly shut. It is depressing. If you have not seen my video that I did on Twitter, which was my open letter to Chelsea FC, it was a bit of fun. I urge you to go check it out. I found it pretty funny. But yeah, Chelsea have made no January signings, still. But Mark Ogden of ESPN, again, I, I don't trust anything ESPN as a rule, and I often get frustrated with their pundits a lot, Steve Nicole, Craig Burley. But Mark Ogden, who goes on there sometimes and writes for them, he always seems just so sensible, do you know what I mean? Like, quite a measured guy. So when he reports on something, it might still be nonsense, but it's almost like, okay, well, this, I usually trust you. He's saying Frank Lampard's two priority targets come the summer, are left back Ben Chilwell and right winger or wide forward Hakim Ziyech. Now we won't be surprised with Ben Chilwell, we know Chelsea want a left back and Chilwell does fit the player profile of Frank Lampard. A lot of people would prefer Chelsea go for a cheaper European option over Ben Chilwell because he's probably going to cost loads and loads of money. But he is talented, he's England's starting left back and why not? We'll see what happens with that. Obviously a lot of people in the comment section on this channel have been calling out for Hakim Ziyech excellent offensive winger superb dead ball specialist very creative and a goal threat a superb player really um, a lot older than sancho i think he's like seven years older than sancho but he would be cheaper it's interesting though isn't it because we know that sancho is a genuine target for chelsea football club but for some reason i chelsea won't sign chilwell sancho and ziesh in one window next summer i feel like if these are the two priority targets Jadon Sancho probably isn't coming to Chelsea Football Club, which I find incredibly disappointing because he genuinely looks like an absolute superstar. When you talk about the up-and-coming teenagers of this world, or I'm not saying Mbappe is not a teenager anymore, but you think of Mbappe, you know, Erling Haaland, stuff like that. Jadon Sancho, people forget he's still 19 because he's achieved so much in terms of his offensive output. I would love him at Chelsea way more than Ziyech. Sure, I get all the guys who watch this channel, love Hakim Ziyech, he's a superb player. But in terms of a forward thinking investment, Jadon Sancho is posting incredible numbers in a more competitive league than obviously the Eredivisie and obviously starts for England. Look, he's just like a superb international level player at just 19. With Chelsea's really, really young squad, he could just develop with this long-term project. And personally, I would much prefer Sancho, even though I'd be really excited to see Ziyech because I think he's a superb player. But maybe Chelsea think, right, it's too much money for Jadon Sancho. Let's just get a left back and see if she's an excellent winger option to replace Willian or Pedro. But still, right, that's in the summer. 
It's all speculation to the summer. There's still like another six months or however long until all this happens. What's happening right now? Well, we all know Frank Lampard has reiterated how he does want a goal scorer this summer. Summer? January. Winter. Help me. Bruce Buck came out with those comments like, I know who we're signing, I'm not going to tell you. I know that might have been a joke, but there's just so much frustration around the Chelsea fan base. Understandably, I try and keep quite measured, but I'm pretty darn angry right now. This is me angry. And then Chelsea troll their own fan base when they obviously released the statement about the uh, new sponsorship signing free. No signings in 23 days, and then free come all, get all at once. Now, okay, let me just put here that I do maintain that Chelsea love deadline day business and they could very well very easily do one hell even two signings on deadline day who knows you know stranger things have happened but just one a goal scorer would be superb please Chelsea Football Club just something even if it's a risk it's just adding an additional chance to help you secure top four right right now if that's in the shape of Christoph Piatek Superb. If that's in the shape of a six month loan deal for Luka Jovic, great. If this is in the shape of a striker that we don't even know of, but you think, oh, this guy's a goal scorer, he can help, great. It could be the cleaning lady from the canteen, or I suppose it's the men's team. It could be the cleaning man from the canteen who scored a few goals outside when he's supposed to be working and you thought, that guy can finish. Sign him up to the Chelsea first team for six months, fine. Anything at this point, you know what I mean? I'm wearing the kit, I look good, I'll take my specs off. You know, sign me up, I'll play off Tammy, whatever, I, I can do it, I'm ready, I'm ready, I mean I've got a bad leg, my hamstring's often tight, but you know, I'll just sort of go hang, well I can't do that anymore because of offside, I'll just sort of, you know, hang upside the final third, cause some damage, I'm pretty strong, I'll bully like the Tottenham defenders, I'm ready. Anyway, obviously keep swinging by football therapy daily and I'll keep you guys updated with any and all stories regarding Chelsea Football Club. But what do you think? I'm always keen to get your thoughts and opinions, so please do express them down in the comment section below. I will read them. If you've enjoyed the content today, please do like the video. And I've just reached 1,000 followers on Instagram, which is a little milestone for me. I'd like to get some more, please. I'm starting to do Instagram Lives. Because I don't do them on streaming on Football Therapy anymore, I like doing streams on Instagram, so make sure you do go follow me on Instagram at Football Yannick. That's it from me, guys. Follow me on Instagram, sub if you're new. Enjoy the football, and I will see you later. You ain't so tough with that bad boy tuck. I'ma get it how I'm living, I'ma walk the walk. Outline my lines, I rap through thought. Body bag the verse, outline the chuck. In my life seen trouble, hustle on the double Silence on the trigger like my pick got a muzzle Yo chick like to guzzle, bad boy stay in trouble I only love this paper, sorry I don't I love me baby